Oh, hey guys. Let's finish up that spooky texture we've been working on. So I realized after the final, the last tutorial ended, that I didn't show you the final step that you need to know in order to move on to the next step, which is this tutorial. You need to go File, Export Image. I've set this hotkey to Control E for a reference on how to set that up. Watch the previous tutorial on setting up hotkeys. So Control E for export. Pick your folder and then pick your file type down here. I like to use PNG because it has a nice alpha layer on it. So I hit save there. These options, you just want to make sure you got 32 bit selected. You want a nice high quality PNG texture. And then the full document size or the minimum Im image area. Those are your two options. The minimum in image the minimum image area is going to include everything that you see, even out beyond the borders of the stage. Full document size is just the borders of the stage. Coincidentally, minimum image area, if your shape is smaller than the bounding box, will be inside small. It's just the bounding box of your drawing. 72 DPI, for some reason, is the resolution of a computer screen. At least it's the resolution of this one and most computer screens. So 512 by 512 at 72. If you did this to 144, it would double it. But you don't want to do that. I mean, you might want to do that if you want a really high resolution spooky ghost texture. The nice thing about Flash is it exports. Um, it scales up as big as you want it to and keeps the same detail. It's kind of cool. But we don't want a really big one, so we'll do that. So go ahead and open up uh, Photoshop. I don't know what's going on. Whoa. I'm clicking stuff, guys. Watch out. There we go. So I can just find my texture here and drag it on over to Photoshop. That's not what I wanted. This is a great object lesson. You'll see here that it's this bizarre thing that is strange and not right. That's because I was inside of my symbol when I hit export. That's not what you want to do. You want to make sure when you export that you're always out at scene one. I'm really glad that that happened because I would assume that that probably happens to a lot of people and they're confused. So I'm going to hit control E again and save my spooky texture again. Yes, I know I want to replace it. This one's better. Um, I'll close this and just uh, drag it in again. And now it's the new one. Ta-da! Hooray! Okay. So, create your new texture here. Or I should probably slow down just in case you guys aren't really familiar with Photoshop. So, here's Photoshop. Welcome to Photoshop, guys. It's the future. Future is now. We got all these different panels. It's kind of like Flash. Oh, we've got stuff you can click on. That's kind of cool. Just like in Flash, you can open up different windows and panels and things. There's like this panel that comes out here when you click the arrow button. It shows all these different menus. Or you can get to the menus individually over here. And, I don't know, these menus like do stuff. How's that for useful? Okay. So you come on down here and uh, you got this little create new. Instead of the layers being over here like they are in Flash, they're over here. It's not really that different. It's just, you know, basically the same. And just like in Flash, you can click and drag these around. I'm going to label these. I can double click on the name. Don't double click on the picture because that brings up this window. And we don't want to use that one window right now. So double click on the name. Oh, don't click on the eye. That'll hide it. Sorry, for those of you who know Photoshop very well, it's probably a little slow for you. You're like, when is he going to get to the thing? And you're going to start fast forwarding. I'm getting there, I promise. Okay. Uh, you can hit uh, X to toggle these. It's kind of cool. It keeps like two colors for you. X on the keyboard switches between them. And then I set paint fill to K. I think it's G normally, but it's also gradient. So I just set paint to K and gradient tool to G so it matches flash because flash is better 
Oh, snap. And then when you click here, you will fill it in with black. Now, you'll notice if I had this, uh, had the checkers, that means that that's going to be transparent in the image. So my end product, I might want it to be transparent, and that's fine. I'll just hide the black layer. You don't want to merge these two together, and you don't want to, like, paint white on the black, because then you're stuck with it. But if you paint the white on this layer and other layers, then you just hide the black and boom, you got transparency. So that's just a good rule of thumb. Keep your transparency intact, yo. And it makes it easy to, to work. Okay, I'm gonna hit X, so I got my white color. The color behind it is the background color. It's used for other things. Yeah, so you set background, set foreground. All right, so smudge tool. What did I set my smudge tool to? Oh, oh yeah, I gotta switch to my Photoshop keys. I use my uh, Logitech G13 over here. I'm always smudging. Now, the bracket keys, uh, left and right bracket, they're the, the square ones. Scale up and down your smudge tool, and then you can see you can smudge here. And if your computer can keep up with you, the smudge tool is really responsive and nice. But if you got stuff open, like this guy. It might go a little slower. Oh, I just realized you guys can't even see the window thing up there. I'm sorry. I need to like configure this. There you go. I'll make it all pretty. Here it comes. Are you ready for this? Oh, covering up my background. Oh yeah. All right. There we go. Now it feels professional. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to duplicate this layer because I want to hang on to it just in case. So if you just click and drag anywhere on that layer, and you drag it over the new layer icon that we clicked earlier, it will duplicate it. It creates a copy. And then we can hide the copy and just keep it there. Just in case we make horrible, terrible mistakes and we need it. With the smudge tool, I like to set it to about 50%. And then over here you can set the brush. Um, I don't know, these are all good. Just kind of like a fuzzy round one, so it's like not smudging hard edge all the time. I don't know, you could probably do that too. You don't want to have finger painting checked, and you don't want to sample all layers. And the mode should be normal. And uh, what's that one do? Always use pressure for size. One off brush preset controls pressure. Sure, leave that one off. Sounds good. You can tell I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional. Now this is really fun to use. I actually really like the brush tool, or the smudge tool. I like the brush tool too. Because you can see, like, if I size it down a little bit, I can get, like, some precision. And the more you go over an area, like, up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down like that, it just gets really, 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 really soft. If you only go over it once, you see the, the gradient, the area of transition is actually not very wide. It's, like, a little bit there and there. But if I just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, the area is much bigger. Transition. And sometimes you want a nice long area of transition, and other times you don't. So this is like I was saying in that uh, other video that I did, you guys may recall, where I was like saying that Photoshop could blur better than Flash. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. Now, because this texture is moving up and down, I, I don't, I want to leave some like softer edges here. Um, sorry, I want to leave harder edges here, right there, and then softer in this direction. So, so you can see that I'm just going to, I'm just going to demo for a little bit here. This is a nice big area in here, so I can be like size up my brush with the bracket key and then just really go to town with that. Effects artists kind of do a little bit of everything. I mean, we do some painting, we do some modeling, some animating, some shapes, and some color, timing. And it's, it's a fun life being an effects artist. Oh, that's fun. Those blurred together there. And then I'm going to smudge to the edge here. And I'll, I know that's going to ruin how it tiles, right? But that's OK. I'm OK with that. I'm willing to accept a little bit of of that. All right, so um, I'm going to switch to the eraser tool now. So E for eraser, and I'm going to set the flow here down to 
like a low value, like 10. Let's see how that. If you're like me, then you got this cruddy eraser that is like spawning really bad. Spacing. So if you go to your brush tool here, I'm going to try this. Put your spacing way down. Ah, there you go. It's like butter. You see that? The spacing's there, and then it's all choppy. I don't want that stuff, you guys. And that's when you've got um, brush tip shape. I guess it's you know, brush tip shape. Oh, geez. Don't do scattering. Okay, get that back in there. So that's under your brush window. If you need that, it's under here, under window and brush. Cool. So um, now I've got a brush. And the flow is too high. I'm going to turn off shape dynamics. <sighs> Transfer. Control, pen pressure. There we go. So, yes, you want to click transfer, check that pen pressure there. So now if I push lightly, it lightly erases. If I push heavy, it erases all of it. But I don't want it to ever erase all of it. I want the flow to be like, <sighs> fine, I won't use flow, I'll use opacity. Those of you who know Photoshop, I know you're seeing me mess up, but I was like, I was sure that flow did it, but Apparently not on the eraser. All right, so I got what I want. Do I have what I want? No, I never have what I want. Shape Dynamics 2, it's back. It's back, boys. Cool, why not? All right, so now that we've been through that ordeal together, at least we're together, guys. I can come through here and I can make my wisps known. I can add wisps within my wisps. It's so meta. The fun thing I like to do is I like to come in here and like swipe it diagonal. And I just imagine those three dimensional shapes going crazy, wrapping all over the place. Usually if a shape gets thin in smoke, okay, so imagine this is a ribbon of smoke, right? If it's thin, that means that it's more uh, dense, I guess you would say. There's, there's more smoke material between you and the thing behind it. But if it's flat, then it's very thin. So it's going to be really transparent on the broad, flat areas. But where it gets thin, it's going to be really like solid white. Does that make sense? So um, I'm going to use the brush tool too. So like the, the thin areas here are going to be like more solid, right? Solid. And then um, as it gets thicker, it's going to be like this kind of thing. I don't know. I just ruined all my work. I know what I'm doing. I promise. I'm professional. I think my smudge is like too strong. Put that strength down. Yeah, I just want like a subtle smudge. That's all I want. Now sometimes I like to do this where I'll erase and then smudge and erase and smudge. And I'll leave one edge crisp, but then I'll smudge up this guy. And that has a fun effect that, you know, this guy is like falling off here and then it's hitting like a really hard edge there. And you can really harden it up. Alright. Came out wrong. Oh well. Nobody noticed. Alright, there we go. Yeah. So we're starting to see some some wispiness going on. I don't know. I feel like I'm getting too tied up in the and everything. So I'm imagining because there's a trough here that that's going to just come on down the middle there. And then a smudge a smudge. Get that all blurred up. Now I wish I had that 50%. There we go. Side to side a little bit. 
I want to keep this this uh, hard edge here intact. That guy's nice. I like that guy. He's a nice guy. You're probably going to start to see some artifacting, some like banding. I don't know if you guys can see it, but stuff happens. I don't know what can be done about it. Ooh, jeez. I don't want black. I want white. Yeah, that can get confusing. If you start painting with black, it's like weird because then you'll turn off your black layer and black will show up here and you're painting and you're like oh oops so try to just paint with white on this layer and then leave the black behind on the background there right. give that face some surrounding interest See, I'm scaling my brushes around, like, oh, smudge, smudge, smudge. If you're like me, it's probably going to look bad at first, and you're going to have to go for a while before it looks good. Oops. I'm sure you guys are having fun at home. Doing your paintings. There's probably better techniques for doing this, the more and more I think about it. But you're not watching those other techniques. You're watching my technique. Yeah, that was nice. And I got a lot more to paint. Paint. This guy looks worried. He looks really worried. Sometimes I like to connect the eye with the mouth. It just makes it feel more wispy and ethereal. Move some of these edges sharp. Size down my smudge brush so I can get up in there. Erase. If you see like little gaps that you want to hop over, just hop over them. Connect those guys together. Make it look like the smoke is a little thin there. Like I said, the thickness of the smoke varies from place to place, right? I don't know, what's that? Connecting to that? Sure. How much you design your shape first before you start smudging the crap out of it is totally up to you. looks really spooky. If you generally leave the uh, leading edge kind of crisp, but then you make the fall off edge kind of like fuzzy like that, it feels really nice. So here I'm going to do this. I'm going to break that rule I just, just mentioned because i got to get this all crisp, crisp, or fuzzy, fuzzy. There we go. There we go. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to crisp up that leading edge. And that one too. See how I did that? So you get a nice mixture. And maybe sometimes it's like a crisp line and then it comes into like a soft line, right? So that happens too. Erase. That feels kind of nice too, how it just the, the crispiness of it just kind of fades away. It's really hard to pull this stuff off in Flash, I tell you what. It's a lot easier in Photoshop. Now remember, wherever you erase, it's going to be more transparent. But that's the whole point. Like, you want variation. You want areas that are really white. You want areas that are really, really dark. So, like, I probably don't have enough variance here. So I could probably come through here 
Be like, okay, okay, boys, and you're racing stuff out. And get it really, really dark, you know what I'm saying? Like so. Like so. Okay. Textures. There we go. I'm just gonna have this guy like the bottom of his mouth fell out or something. Poor guy. That'd be rough. I don't like how this wisp is calling so much attention to itself. It's kind of become its own entity. I think if I'm gonna have it there, I want it to be really subtle and faint. To kind of just fall in. Same goes for this guy here. I don't want like super thin, long, stringy shapes in my texture. The reason is those are going to call a lot of attention to themselves. If you leave them long and stringy like that, it's bad news. Bad news bears. You'll notice that this is actually a pretty far departure from what I originally had in Flash. And that's fine. Um, that's why in Flash, you remember I made the note about I don't need to fiddle around with this because I'm just going to change it anyway. Well, now you can see just how much it's changed. So yeah, don't worry about getting the shapes perfect before you start smudging the crap out of them because then you're just going to get too tight with your shapes in here. And that's bad because you don't want to be all like, you know, bound up doing your shapes in a very specific way. Well, that's looking pretty spooky, guys. I like it, but I have not delivered on my promise of making it tileable just yet, because as you see, if I were to, oops, if I were to hit, uh, if I were to duplicate the layer, and move one of them down, and move the other one up, and I tried to match them up, you'll see that they don't quite tile. They come close, I mean, but there's this obvious line of where one ends and the other begins. So I got an edge. All right, so uh, hit undo, which is control Z. If you need to undo multiple times, I probably should have said this earlier because you've probably dropped your pen like me. You've probably needed to undo a few times, and so you need to hit control alt Z. And the difference between control Z and control alt Z is control alt Z, it goes up the history. Control Z just like toggles between the last two things in your history that you did. So. What I want to do is I want to go to Filter. I want to come on down here. I want to go to Other. I want to hit Offset. And because this is a 256 by 256, I think by default we can set to 0. I want to offset it first. Vert let's do Vertical first. 256. Because that's half of 512. So all that did is it took the bottom half and it shifted it down off the bottom and put it up at the top. I'm motioning with my hands. Trust me, it made sense over here. Go to the wisp slayer, and you can just smudge these guys together. It's pretty straightforward. Now, what you don't want to do is you don't want to keep noodling off on the sides and the tops and the bottom. Because I know now, because I just saw it before, the top and the bottom actually tile pretty nicely. I don't want to mess with that. I guess I could mess with it. I would just have to then offset again and go back and fix whatever I messed up. It just looks so nice. There we go. Yeah, you'll, you'll notice what looks nice is when you've got like a white and then a hard line that divides it from like a gray. So I want, I want some more of that in my life. There we go. There we go. 
and then maybe erase a little more. Erase it, yeah. Sure, I like it. You guys like it? I just smudge kind of once like that, or twice or three times. I don't know what I was gonna say because I didn't end up smudging it just once. But you can't smudge just once. There we go. The important thing is, I don't know what the important thing is. It sounds like that. There we go. If you have like large areas of white, you probably want to break those up a little bit. And um, as it tapers, so. Notice how it's like dark down here because I'm erasing a little bit at the bottom and, I'll, and then a little bit up and up so that it's falling off. You see this fall off here? It's like really, really dark gray. That is going to look really nice in the game. It's going to fade off really gradually and it's going to look like procedurally generated smoke that was painted. It's going to look like this nice, calm, like believable smoke but like artistic at the same time. That's the sweet spot you want to go for. I'm going to kind of get these two points to look like they, they like each other, like they were once connected, but now they are no longer just reaching out for each other. I can still mess around over here on the sides because I'm going to tile it side to side in a minute. That's the way I haven't done it yet. So I'm looking for large areas of like just pure white, and I, I kind of want to knock those down like like so. Leave the core white, but, you know, erase and smudge and erase and smudge and erase and smudge over and over and over again until you got it the way you want it. Um, erase that begs to be erased. Because I like asymmetry. Like, it was like this hard bar here and a hard bar here. And now it's soft. That's better. That's better. And uh, same goes up here. Uh, let's do it on this side. Oops, erase. That's what I wanted. Yeah, erase, erase. You don't want it to literally look like a face in there. You, you kind of want to have some organicness to it. You guys are really going to like the next trick. I promise. I'm just trying to keep you interested while I do this. I'm almost ready for the next part. Oh, I did it. I did the top to bottom thing. But here's the cool thing. If you do the top to bottom, um, there's an easy way to go back to what it was. That's like too hard of an edge for too long right there. Ooh, that feels nice. I like that. I need like a blurry side to side somewhere. This guy's gonna be it. Over and over and over again. Size it down. Do some more. Add in a little bit of body to it. And then erase, erase, erase. Knock it back down to size. There we go. Got this really faint wisp right here. So my black areas are not just purely black all the time. I mean, obviously there's like areas like this that are black, but I've got this nice dark texture in there and that just feels good. It just feels nice having, it gives it like depth, like it feels like there's something further off in the distance or something, you know. So I could just keep noodling on this. You get the idea though, right? If I zoom out, I can get a quick look at how it's feeling. It's really contrasty, so sometimes like you want that, like you want it to feel like it's like blocks of solid wisp and then big areas of rest in between, um, big gaps. Sometimes you might want it to feel a little misty, like it's like all 
solid mist moving by. Yeah. So you can, for that you can create another layer, and you can just I don't know create your mist Yo. and then smudge the crap out of it, and then your computer can have fun. Oh gosh, what have I done? By the way, if you use a large smudge brush like I just did, and make all these strokes, it's going to take your computer a while to, pick, to catch up to you. So instead, um, you can just go filter, uh, blur, uh, Gaussian blur, and just blur the crap out of it. There you go. Okay. And then you can go filter, other offset, and it remembers what you did last time, which is kind of nice. And then uh, you can just go filter blur, college and blur again, it remembers that again. And then there you go. And then I can go filter other offset again. And now it's, I'm just like making sure that the blur offsets. And if I do it up and down here on the sides and up and down here, then hopefully the side to side won't look that bad. So now if I go filter other offset, Zero on the vertical, 256. Oof. Side to side, a little bit. Although that did give me an idea. Erase. 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 And smudge that up some. So I've got some variation in my wispy behind texture. It's like all ribbony wispy going on back in there. I'm going to hide the ghosts because they're messing me up. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Now if I go filter offset again, Oh, that line's just really subtle right there. Okay. Yeah, you see the banding? That just happens. This, like, weirdness going on. And you try to smudge it, and it's just it's like a smudge on your glasses that you get. It's kind of a pain. If you know how to get rid of it, leave a comment. Because I don't know. I'm just, I'm just a flash artist in a Photoshop artist's world over here. All right, so we'll leave that there, banding and all. And then we turn back on this guy, and I can choose how transparent this guy is, right? So I can just have it really, really subtle, like so. So it still has areas of black for me, or I can crank it up so that it's more of a solid wispy texture I can do. It. Do as I please. I'm going to leave it pretty subtle. And I'm going to hide it so I can more easily work on this guy. So if I do filter offset, um, it was vertical. Yeah, it, it remembers it at the top, by the way. That's the fancy thing. It's control F does the last filter that you did. So if I did vertical offset like that, then I can do it again, and it'll offset it again. I did flub that up a little bit there. Okay. So the vertical's good, right? There's no line across the middle there. But I have not yet done the side to side. The side to side thingy, also known as horizontal. Well, that doesn't look bad. Because I spent so long in Flash trying to make sure that it was a good tiling texture there, it reduces the amount of work I have to do here to make sure that everything lines up. That's why I like to do it in Flash, is because you can see in real time how it's tiling or not tiling. So the final step is a little trick I like to do. If I turn that on there, I can come on down and I can add, not that, I can add this guy, a gradient map 
So um, you can tell how much of a pro I am in Photoshop. There's a little uh, icon here. It's a circle that's like half filled in and half not. You click on that and click gradient map. And you'll notice what it does is it grabs everything over here that's dark and it makes it into this color. I'll double click on this guy to change it around. So I want my darks to be, I don't know, dark red. And I want my lights to be light teal. Yeah, there we go. And then here in the middle, so I'll move this over here so you can see what the heck I'm doing. Here in the middle, I want, oh, you can just click anywhere and it'll create a new one of these. I want like, yeah, like spooky purple. Saturated, saturated. And this is where you start to see the, the importance of having areas of white that are not the big and broad areas because it, it doesn't work as well with these kinds of things. See, because it's like, they're just stuck at that color. Maybe the red is a little darker. Maybe this guy is uh, red in between. So like it's fading to a color that's almost black. It's almost black, but not quite. And um, right here in the in-between spot, it's like more of a reddish. So it's fading from a blue through a magenta into a deep red. And there you go. So I have like uh, three different hues, right? I got my light blue, my magenta, and my dark red. All right, and I can come back in here, thankfully, and I can still uh, erase stuff out. And what's cool about this is the way I did it, if I hide that layer, um, I can see what it looks like, right? And so you can see what I was talking about with the, the importance of having gradients that fade off to the dark, dark, dark because they look really, really nice. And I want the rest of it to look nice like that too. And I only want small areas of blue. I don't want like so much hot spot everywhere. So much hot spot everywhere. And I want gradients all over the place. Please, gradients. Oh, gradients. So it feels like it's burning off to this color. You could do this with any colors you want, really. In fact, I'm not even sure that these colors appeal to me. They're really weird. They're all so saturated. So I can come back in here and I can double click on the gradient. Oh, it comes up in that properties window. You can click on the gradient there. This cyan color needs to be like desaturated quite a bit and darkened. Uh, maybe not darkened a lot. And then this guy is pretty saturated too. So I'm gonna... Mm, mm, mm. It just needs to be a little more harmonized. I think I was going a little too far away from... Like if you go into the greens, it just feels out of place. But as we move up more towards the blues, it harmonizes a little better with the pinks and the purples. Yeah. So that's, that's a good thing. More harmony. So there you have it. I'm on the wrong layer. You can just keep noodling to your heart's content, guys. But basically, that's how it's done. That's a spooky wisp. Hope you liked the tutorial, and I hope you learned something.